Hey Nathan, this is a video that I'm super excited to do because we're talking about the top five electric vehicles, actually cars, that we're most excited to drive in the next, let's call it, year-ish. Some of them are actually gonna be available much sooner than that. Uh, so let's get right to it, huh? Yep, absolutely. If you're in the market for a sweet pair of headphones, check out this pair from Cove. I've been using these to edit TFL videos for about a month, and the Bluetooth works from 30 feet away. That way, you can even flip on the noise canceling and tune out while you're working in the garage. They're super comfortable and a charge lasts up to 12 hours, which means you can fold them up, toss them in their included bag, and take your music anywhere. Plus, if you get a call while wearing them, the built-in mic won't miss a beat. Here's something cool. With noise canceling on, they're quiet from the outside until you open them up. Usually these headphones are 199 bucks, but use the code FAST68 and get over 67% off of them. And that's the best deal you're gonna find on noise canceling headphones anytime soon. And the reviews speak for themselves. For more information, click the link in the description below. All right, number five on our list, Nathan, has to be the just introduced Volkswagen ID4. Now this is Volkswagen's electric crossover that competes directly with the Model Y and of course, another car on this list, the Mach-E. Um, and you know, the ID3 is already available in Europe and the ID4, Volkswagen says, will eventually be built here. What do you think of the thing? I, I'm excited about it and for a couple of reasons. For one, entry level price looks like it's gonna be pretty reasonable. It is a vehicle that they've been working on for a long time. It is the first electric vehicle they're introducing here in the United States. And eventually they will be building it in, I think, Chattanooga. Um, and it'll be available rear drive or all wheel drive in the near future. So all those things make it really compelling. The packaging looks great. I think it's a good looking vehicle. Yeah, starting price $39,995. Uh, that's before incentives. Uh, and you know, we've had the uh, e-golf uh, and that was let's face it kind of a swing and a miss we liked it a lot but it just didn't have the range that's it's that's not the same thing this is a purpose-built ev yeah 250 that, miles of range mm -hmm. uh, and it's certainly got that volkswagen design language you know it's got the kind of the sweet spot that it's in because it's a crossover uh, and uh, it just looks pretty cool now um, i can't wait to get behind the wheel because you know we've been doing a lot of ev coverage uh, we've got the Loveland Trials, the world's toughest EV car test. That is so, tough. So Volkswagen, if you're listening to us, send us either to go drive it or send us one our way, right? Because uh, me and Nathan will uh, we'll, we'll see what's what. We will test it. And here's the best part about something like this. This is ushering in the whole batch of Volkswagen products that are coming our way that are EVs. There's a van that's coming and they're expecting possibly some... Bully. Yeah, the, the buzz, the ID buzz. <laughs> so, I mean, that's some cool stuff. And, you know, I'm looking forward to all that because this is a big market. Uh, it's just beginning to expand and I'm you looking think, forward to it. Do you think we're actually in the point where it's gone from kind of, you know, in America, right, when the pendulum swings, it swings fast. So do you think we're to the point where now it's swinging away from internal combustion cars and into electric cars? You think this is like the, the straw that broke the camel's back? No. Okay. This is where you and I are very different. All right. I feel that this is going to complement internal combustion engine cars, whereas in you think, I think it's going to replace a lot of them. I think that we'll be able to drive more gas vehicles or exotic ones because we'll have more electric vehicles that we can also drive and that'll sort of pad each other. I think that actually may complement each other. And remember, in some states like California, they're looking at going completely green in the next, what, 15 years or something like that. Yeah, so, so, so you know, um, I mean, I know places like Norway, you know, most cars are now electric or new cars are now electric, but I was driving down from the mountains in our new i3 uh, last night mm -hmm. yeah, and there are no electric cars. Uh, we were the only electric car driving, yeah. driving down. I mean, it, it really is like That's 1 percent right or maybe 2 percent of all. It's, it's, it, it is really a tiny percentage. Every automaker will have an electric vehicle in the offering within the next couple of years, which is why we're doing this list, because this is the one 
that these are the vehicles that are coming really, really soon. And the next one is actually coming any time now, right? We're expecting our friend Alex has two on order. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the uh, Mustang Mach E, of course, which is you know the electric version of a Mustang if it were a crossover, which is a four door crossover. Yeah, which is weird. It it, it is weird. I, you know, if they just got rid of the name Mustang, I would really like it. The Mach E. Yeah, just call it the Mach E. Yeah, Mach E Dusa. And here's the thing about it. That's um, a good point, Nathan. That's a free one for you, Ford. Run yeah, with it. There you go. You're welcome. Um, I, I, it, it's a really interesting vehicle. It's one that they've been working on, and recently, Roman, it's one that they've lowered the base price on. Yeah, up to $3,000. That's so right. We did that That's right. video last week. Uh, there's going to be basically a bunch of different models, uh, starting with, of course, the limited edition, <laughs> first edition, right? Uh, and I don't know how limited it is, because initially they were going to, I'm saying that with a little bit of tongue in cheek. They were gonna only, I think, sell a few thousand and then they opened up orders for more. And so, you know, Ford, let's face it, Ford makes their money by selling a lot of cars, not by keeping things limited. So they'll, right. I think they'll, they'll sell as many as they can sell. Well, the point here is that this is a vehicle that will compete directly with the Model Y. Yep. Uh, um, both in terms of its overall shape and its overall design, internally, externally, its power source, a lot of the, a lot of similarities between the two of them. Starts at 43000 before incentives, depending on, of course, which model you get. Uh, and uh, even though it does compete with the Model Y, there's really only one that competes directly with the Performance Model Y, that's right, a that, GT. Right. And that's not coming till maybe later next year. Yeah, maybe. And what, because of COVID and everything else, things have been pushed back and the timing is all screwed up. But we do know it's coming. And once again, according to Ford, there's a lot of demand and they're dropping the base price, so we're those get, are big. Yeah, we're getting a lot of uh, uh, spy photographs from you guys, seeing that you've seen them on the road. Um, but it was unveiled at last year's LA Auto Show, so... Not only that, I drove inside of one and it's the Chicago Auto Show, which is the last auto show we went to before. Yeah, what was it like in there? It was, it was very tight in the back yeah. seat. Yeah. Uh, the front seat was fine. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the guy who was behind the wheel was like one of their, he wasn't even a tech. He was just someone who was hired to drive or whatever. And he really didn't want to open it up. I wanted him to open the taps and I knew there was more. So next so time. The Volkswagen is uh, un until they moved production to Chattanooga made in Germany and right. the mach is actually made in Mexico, Nathan. Right, but I'm hearing that they, they may expand and build it in many US. other places. That's that's the, the rumor. Let's move on to one that is actually has been recently teased, and I'm looking forward to this one for a different reason, and that is the Chevy Bolt EUV, and that's number three on our list. So that's a Chevy Bolt that's more of a crossover and less of like an economy car. That's right. Expected delivery date is fall of 2021. Production to start this summer, starting price to be announced, but somewhere a figure in the $40,000 range, like mm -hmm. the rest of these, right? Right. Uh, so why are we excited by another bigger, better Volt? Well, Bolt. I, because I love the Bolt. Okay. It's one of my favorite electric so cars. Nathan tried to buy a Bolt, but he uh, got to the dealership too late. I'm so mad about that. What happened, dude? It was an, for sale. This one was a hail damaged car. They're really hard to find, but it ran great. The guys were a little fishy, uh, like they didn't have the, the cord. And they said, oh yeah, we'll buy one for you or whatever. I'm on my way to buy the car. On my way to the dealership to buy the car. Okay. And I get a phone call. Well, actually a text saying, oh, sorry, we sold the car. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, th there's a lot more that goes with it, but the point is is that the Chevy Bolt is one of my favorite cars. I've driven several now, including I drove one for two weeks at the last LA Auto Show I was at, and living with it for two weeks really gave me a good feel for the car. It's very small, um, and that was one of the issues I had with it. So, the reason why I'm excited about the Chevy Bolt EUV is that it's a larger version of the Bolt with we're assuming they haven't announced it yet. All wheel drive. And Super Cruise. And Super Cruise. Yeah, we know that. We so, know that. So, so there's a version be, of Super yeah, Cruise. Yeah, the first Chevy have. model was Super Cruise, which mm -hmm. is basically, you know, a level two autonomous driving uh, system. So it competes with like Tesla's autopilot. Right. And, and it's a, it's a very interesting system. But here's the main thing about it. If you look at the one picture that they sent up there where it's a silhouette, you'll see that it's just a larger vehicle, at least with its silhouette, than the Bolt, which makes sense because they, you know, obviously are going for, you know, a family. And I really am looking forward to driving one of these because, as I said, I loved driving the Bolt. All right, number two, now we're getting more expensive vehicles. Uh, we're talking about the Mercedes-Benz EQS, not the EQC, the EQS. Now the EQC had, oh my, I remember uh, seeing it at every auto show this year, uh, and then it was finally uh, um, 
put into production in Germany. Uh, there was a media drive for it uh, in Europe, uh, and they sold like two. I'm, I'm joking, but they, they... They didn't sell many. They didn't sell. So this is not that crossover. This is like the S-Class of electric cars. So what do we know about it? Well, it, not a ton. There's a lot of TBA on this car. So um, Mercedes, um, they are expecting a delivery sometime in 2021. Yep. But we're not sure exactly when. Nope. Uh, starting price, well, that's again, TBA. We're expecting it's somewhere around $100,000, but we don't know for sure. Um, it will likely be the most luxurious EV we've seen so far. They're looking at putting it in a high luxury class. But once again, we don't know for sure. Um, they say zero to 60 is gonna be around four seconds. Uh, it's gonna be built on an all EV platform like the EQC crossover. And um, you know, it could be a remarkable car or it could be kind of ugly. Yeah, um, you know, a zero to 60 in four seconds uh, and built on an EV platform like the EQC. Uh, you know, Mercedes uh, has not had a great record in building electric cars. We've got their smart electric car, which gets like, you know, 70 miles of range. Uh, and actually the newest generation of smart electric car actually gets less range. So they went- Which is crazy. Well, they went the other way. Uh, and uh, hopefully, you know, they, they uh, kind of got it right because um, they are playing catch up to Tesla. Uh, to Tesla and to Audi. Yep, exactly right. Yep. All right, well, let's talk about the number one car on our list. Um, and this isn't actually my number one car. Uh, I've got a bonus for you, Nathan, I'm gonna surprise you with. Okay. That you don't know about. That is my number one car because it's coming soon, but this is by far the best looking electric car ever. Oh ever. my God. Look at that thing. We saw it in real life mm. at the LA Auto Show. It was there one day. Yeah, yep, yeah. and Robert Downey Jr. came in and introduced it. Yeah, we're talking about the Audi e-tron uh, GT. This is the one that was in the latest Avengers movie. Uh, starting price, once again, TBA, but at least 100K. Now, why are we excited, Nathan? Well, first of all, it's just damn good looking. Yeah, and it, that picture doesn't do it justice. It doesn't. It, the thing is, is that it uses a very similar platform to the Porsche um, version there. Taycan. Yeah. The thing is, is that this is done right. Everything about the, the proportions, the overall exterior design, but it's also fast. Zero to 60 is expected to be 3.5 seconds, dual motive performance, 590 horsepower. Uh, it, it's just, it, it's the business, guys. I mean, look at that. Now, now, Audi has done two electric cars so far, right? They've got the e-tron, e which is a crossover. Right. Right, and then they got the kind of the coupe version of it. Yeah. Uh, which mm. is, you know, a crossover with a little less room. With less room, Ooh, which yeah. makes no sense for me. And they keep upping the um, amount of uh, range, right? So I think the e-tron started at like 220, now it's up to like 230 or 240. Right. Uh, and uh, you know, the GT is gonna be up there, like you said, with the Taycan, right? Dual motor performance, 590 horsepower, zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds. I mean, a proper model as competitor, dude. A proper, and in my mind, a better looking car, by far. Yeah. It's just gorgeous. All right, and the one that I, I think I'm the most excited to drive, uh, is uh, actually a surprise, and that it's of course the Lucid Air, which is coming very soon, uh, beginning of next year. Uh, now that is a bunch of uh, Tesla engineers that went out and basically started their own battery company. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> they've got a factory that they're building these things at in they Phoenix. They defected. Yeah, and they just uh, unveiled it like uh, two weeks ago, and the numbers were staggering. 503 miles of range, Nathan. Crazy range, yeah, the performance uh, is incredible. They're looking at you know a sub 10 second quarter mile time, uh, zero to 60 in like 2.3 seconds, basically uh, the same numbers or close to the numbers uh, that the Tesla well, they model, to, model S Plaid is getting. Right, they want to beat Tesla at their own game. And, and supposedly they're also looking at a much lower entry price. Uh, no, actually. Really? I, yeah, I, I it's, heard it's that the exact gonna, opposite. No, I heard <laughs> they're going to go for a lower 160, price. Star, 160 starting. Is it 160? Uh, yeah, 160 uh, starting for the first edition. Uh, my bad. And then eventually uh, the cheap one may be down to 100. And keep in mind that the Tesla Model S is under 100 now. Under 100. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be expensive. The coolest thing about it, I don't know if you saw pictures of it, but it's got this trunk that's really like a, a hatch out of a spaceship, right? The whole thing opens up. The sides of it open up. Uh, yeah. Uh, and it, it looks like. Uh, you know, uh, a very futuristic uh, version of um, the kind of car that you would see in uh, Blade Runner. Remember those police cars in Blade Runner? I remember them. Right, the yeah. original Blade Runner. 
Or the new Blade Runner. The new one, the Adam yeah. 2, yeah. yeah. That, that's what it looks like. It kind of looks the same coming and going, but uh, by far. And then there's one more that, that, that I know you want us to put on this list, but we don't know a lot about it, but it was just well, unveiled. I, 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 I've got some basics right. on it. It's the Nissan uh, Aria. Uh, was recently unveiled, uh, once again, Model Y competitor. So it's a double bonus today, Nathan. Yeah. Starts at around 40000 uh, What do you think of it? I, well... Nissan has been working on this car for a long time and they've been hinting and hinting and hinting that they wanted to build basically an all-wheel drive Nissan Leaf that was a crossover in terms of size and this is basically what they've done and some people don't like the styling I like the silhouette of it personally I think it's a great looking silhouette they're looking at putting this will compete directly against the ID4 in price in packaging in terms of the demographics and everything else this is the competitive vehicle and Nissan's been in this game for a long time they build a reliable capable electric vehicle and they've been doing that for years belief, yeah. and every year they've been improving on their vehicles so I really do believe that this Aria could be a special Special Nissan's vehicle. promising 300 miles of range, um, available in a single or dual motor configuration, and right. up to 388 horsepower and 443 pound-foot of torque. Yeah. yeah, which is all of those things are great. Look, not everybody wants to go zero to 60 in three seconds. I do, but not everybody does. And this is already going to be quick. The one thing about the Nissan Leaf, especially the older ones, they were not fast. This is something that's going to be very different. And at the same time, they are promising that it will be capable of all weather and possibly some off-roading. So what we've got here is we've got a bunch of crossovers. We've got a GT car, right? And we've got uh, a sedan. My question, Nathan, is where the hell are the sports cars? I mean, you know, I know there's a Tesla Roadster coming, but that's not going to be affordable. Nobody's that's buying sports cars, Roman. You said it yourself. <sighs> Dude, I just want a, I want an electric sports car. I know you do. I really I'm want sorry, a big yeah, guy. Yeah, where are the electric it, sports it's, cars? It, it, they're not there, and, and it's because Americans aren't going to buy them, and that's the bummer. If you took one of these, put two doors on it, and made it a convertible, they'd sell half of them or even a quarter of them. This has four doors, and it can hold five people, I think, and it will sell more. And if it were a crossover, it would sell even more. So That's I, just the way people are right now. So I think I gotta get my uh, uh, sports car lust and redirect it into trucks because there's a bunch of trucks coming. We yes, know. there's a ton. But of that's trucks. a whole different channel. That is a different channel, and that, we didn't include those specifically because there's so many trucks coming. We're putting them somewhere else. By the way, before we close this, have you been watching a long way up at all? I really want to watch it. I've been yeah. watching all the previews, and it's like I'm jonesing to watch it. So we got a new motorcycle channel that we started uh, recently, uh, TFL Bike. Um, if you're interested, uh, there's a link to it below. Our man Alex uh, is working hard on putting up a lot of motorcycle, moto content, uh, so check it out. Uh, and you got to watch uh, Long Way Up, dude. It's, uh, you know, they took a bunch of uh, electric motorcycles uh, and a Rivian, two Rivians, mm -hmm. uh, from the tip of Terra de Fuego all the way to L.A. You and McGregor and his brother, right? Well, his buddy, Charlie Borman. Oh, okay. Oh, Borman. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, I'll still watch it. All right, all right. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, yeah, let us know what you're most excited on this list. Uh, which one, if you had won the lottery, Nathan, which would you get? Yeah, I mean, without a doubt, because yeah. it's just, I would leave it in my garage and stare at it. Yeah. And probably get a divorce <laughs> and just stare at it. Okay, I would. You know, I, oh, God, that Audi is beautiful. The problem is, if you got a divorce, your wife would do it with it. <laughs> then she would take it away. You're right. Okay. All right. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. See Ciao. you guys.